Hello, my name is Emma, and I welcome you to my channel. What a century of earthquakes has taught Japan it's been nearly 13 years since the devastating earthquake and tsunami that triggered an accident at a nuclear plant in Fukushima. But memories in Japan are still fresh. And on Monday, all of them will have been brought back into focus as the shaking began in Ishikawa and the tsunami alarms began sounding. Lee Jae-myung South Korea opposition leader stabbed in neck on visit to Busan South Korea's opposition leader Lee Jae-myung has been stabbed in the neck during a visit to the city of Busan. Mr. Lee, who narrowly lost the 2022 presidential election, sustained a one-centimeter laceration on the left side of his neck, reports said. He was airlifted to hospital. Doctors say the wound is not life-threatening. The 66-year-old man who attacked him said he had intended to kill Mr. Lee, Yonhap News Agency reported. The motive for the attack is unclear. Mother in UK court after children's deaths in Colorado. A mother accused of murdering two of her children in the US has appeared in court for extradition proceedings after being arrested in the UK. Kimberly Singler, 35, was detained on Saturday in central London. Her daughter, aged 9, and son, 7, were found dead at a home in Colorado on December 19, along with her 11-year-old daughter who was injured, US police said. Who owns the narrative? If United States lawmakers are to be believed, it is currently at risk of being hijacked by China, disseminated on de facto spyware by impressionable youth swiping short-form videos in their bedrooms. Official tutaing at TikTok, owned by China's ByteDance, is nothing new. The prospect of a ban has been looming for a while. In March, U.S. senators introduced the Restrict Act, a bipartisan bid to give the president powers to boot it out of U.S. cyberspace on national security grounds. Analysis, is the Israeli army as militarily successful as it claims? As we enter 2024, the Israeli army can claim some successes in the war on Gaza, and also has failures to reckon with. Coordinated, focused, deadly and brutal, the Hamas attacks of October 7 were a shock to Israeli society. The country's defense, intelligence and security organizations, sources of national pride, were caught unawares and unprepared. They acted slowly and inadequately, with the whole establishment humiliated. Outraged, Brazilian Muslims face growing Islamophobia over Gaza war. A survey released last month suggests approximately 60% of Brazilian Muslims experienced religious intolerance. It wasn't unusual for patients to arrive in a foul temper at the hospital emergency room in Sao Paulo, Brazil, where physician Batul Sleiman worked. After all, every day brought new medical crises, new requests for urgent care. Slayman had seen it all. But she was not expecting the level of anger she received several weeks ago. North Korea says it will no longer seek reunification with South Korea, will launch new spy satellites in 2024. North Korea will no longer seek reconciliation and reunification with South Korea, Kim Jong-un has declared, as his nation vowed to put three new military spy satellites into orbit in 2024. Kim said in Turkorean relations had become a relationship between two hostile countries and two belligerents at war, the state-run news agency KCNA reported. It's time for us to acknowledge the reality and clarify our relationship with the South, Kim said adding that if Washington and Seoul were to attempt a military confrontation with Pyongyang, its nuclear war deterrent will not hesitate to take serious action. Israel's top court strikes down key part of judicial overhaul, reigniting divisions as war rages. Israel's Supreme Court on Monday struck down a controversial government plan to limit the powers of the judiciary, in an unprecedented move that reignited fierce tensions in the country as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu wages war against Hamas in Gaza. The court ruled, by eight votes to seven, that a government amendment to the so-called reasonableness law should not stand. The bill had stripped the Supreme Court of the power to declare government decisions unreasonable and was the first major piece of a multi-pronged effort to weaken the judiciary to be passed by the Knesset, Israel's parliament, last year. Passengers hoped this time traveling flight would give them two New Year's Eves, but they arrived in the wrong year. Passengers on a United Airlines flight hoping to travel back in time for New Year's got off to an unfortunate start in 2024. Flight UA200 was originally scheduled to depart Guam at 7.35 a.m. on January 1, 2024, and land in Honolulu, Hawaii at 6.50 p.m. on December 31, 2023, traveling across time zones to take passengers back a year. You only live once, but you can celebrate New Year's Eve twice. United Airlines had tweeted earlier that week.
In a separate Instagram post about Flight UA200, it wrote, Time travel is real. Taylor Swift's Chiefs jacket has Swifties even happier with Travis Kelsey. Just when you thought the romance between Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey couldn't get any cuter. The superstar singer showed up at her football player Bo's New Year's Eve game on Sunday, wearing a Kansas City Chiefs jacket resembling one Kelsey sometimes wears. But Swift's had a little something extra. Eagle-eyed Swifties spotted that a Tay Tay appeared to be stitched on the jacket, which sent her fan base into a frenzy on social media since many of them have used either that nickname or just Taya for Swift. Sydney Sweeney and Glenn Powell heat up a basic sun and fun rom-com in Anyone But You. Anyone But You joins a subgenre of romantic comedies where the challenge isn't so much bringing the couple together, but finding creative ways to keep them apart. Mostly, this fun in the sun romp in Australia, because hey, it's summer there, serves as a showcase for Sydney Sweeney and Glenn Powell, who amiably meet the demands of the exercise even if the script only occasionally follows suit. Sweeney and Powell's B and Ben meet very cute at the outset, spending a heady night together before she runs off, leaving him confused and angry, and she soon overhears him dismissing her to his buddy in an act of bravado. Les McCann, innovative jazz musician best known for, compared to what, dies at 88. Les McCann, a prolific and influential musician and recording artist who helped found the soul jazz genre and became a favorite source for sampling by Dr. Dre, a tribe called Quest and hundreds of other hip-hop performers, has died. He was 88. McCann died Friday in Los Angeles a week after being hospitalized with pneumonia, according to his longtime manager and producer, Alan Abrahams. Marsha Warfield, bailiff Roz Russell on Night Court, returns to the show that has a big heart. Fans of the rebooted hit NBC sitcom A Night Court might have been forgiven for tuning in all season long and asking where's Roz? Roz Russell, played by comedian Marsha Warfield, was the salty, no-nonsense bailiff alongside Bull Shannon who had a world-weary view of the shenanigans in the courtroom during the show's original run from 1984 to 1992. But Roz wasn't in the reboot that aired at the top of 2023. John Laroquette as prosecutor Dan Fielding was the only full-time cast member to return. Thank you thank you so much, we'll meet very soon.